today. So thank you all for, for joining the webinar today. I'm Nicolas, I'm from Digital Yachts. As you can hear, I'm French, but I'm sure you will be able to understand my French accent. And here is Antoine. Yeah. Hello, hello everyone. Hey, okay. Hello. Thank you. You can all mute your mic, please, because if you all speak at the same time, it will be very difficult to listen to us. Right, so let's start for today. So today we're going to do a webinar showing the Time Zero TZ iBot iOS app, as well as all the digital yacht products when you can be able to send all your navigation data, IS, GPS, etc., to the TZ iBot. So to start with, we're gonna start with the digital yacht products, and then Antoine from Time Zero is going to explain his navigation apps. If you have any questions, please you can directly write through the chat base, or you can wait at the end of the webinar, and we are going to have a Q and A sessions when we will reply directly to all your your questions. Okay, so. Let's start about how to get all your navigation data into the TZ iBot navigation app. So as you may as you may know, you can now use your tablet for navigation and it's a beauty using your iPad or smartphone with an app like TZ iBot. But what is even better is when your tablet is directly connected to your navigation system on board. So how do we do that? It's quite simple. We use what we call an NMEA to Wi-Fi server. So it's a box like this here. It's quite simple. If you got an NMEA network on board, we directly connect that box into your navigation network, whether it's NMEA 2000 or NMEA 0183. And then this creates a Wi-Fi network on board. So when I say Wi-Fi, is nothing to do with internet. You won't be able to watch Netflix, Facebook, or whatever, it's just a way of communications like USB or Bluetooth. So with our enemy to Wi-Fi server, you will then get a local Wi-Fi net network and wherever, where you are in the world, in the middle of the oceans, in your marina, etc., you will get all your navigation data through the Wi-Fi network. And by then connecting your iPad to the Wi-Fi network, you will receive all your data onto the TZ iBot navigation app. So at the end, afterwards, we are going to discuss the TZ iBot and Antoine will show you how the, the app works. So if you also already have a Wi-Fi network on board, because I'm sure some of you guys got Starlink, uh, a 4G booster on board or any other enemy Wi-Fi router, with a digital yacht enemy to Wi-Fi, you can directly very easily merge to your existing Wi-Fi on board so that you can just have one Wi-Fi network with all your navigation data as well as the internet, etc. Right? So, um, which products do you need? It's really based on the type of enemy network you got on board. Most of the recent boats obviously has NMEA 2000, so it's quite simple with the Navlink 2 when it has a built-in NMEA 2000 cable. So you just connect the built-in NMEA 2000 cable to the NMEA 2000 network. And then it will take its power directly through the enemy 2000 network. So it's very easy to install. You just connect the enemy 2000 cable to one of the spare T connector on your network, and that's it. And the Navlink 2 will take all your navigation data, navigation data, electric, PGN, anything you got with enemy 2000, the Navlink 2 will take the, the data. However, if you have an, an enemy or one of equipment, like an AIS transponder from Garmin or an old uh, instrument system like Remarine CTOK instrument or whatsoever, you will then need the WLN30. The so WLN30 has three enemy or one three input and one enemy or one eight three output. So if you don't know how to connect your the enemy or one three to your system, it's quite simple. Just go to your blog digitalio.net and we have a list of all the enemy or one three equipments and we explain how to connect our WN30 to your navigation system, like which wires blue and white to your Remarine IS transponder, CTOK uh, instrument, etc. And obviously if you don't know how to connect one of the enemy or one three to Wi-Fi system to your system to your equipment, just drop us an email and we can explain this. 
So all our enemies to Wi-Fi are bidirectionals, meaning that you can also send some data from your tablet directly to your navigation system. So with an app like TZ iBot, you can actually manage your autopilot. So you simply manage your route on the app, and then all the data will be sent back to your autopilot and chat plotter, like your waypoints. So also, sorry, I'm just admitting some people. Some people are waiting in the chat. Right. So the next step is also about AIS. So if you don't have an AIS on board, we now have some IS transponder with built-in Wi-Fi, such as the EISTX or the AIT 5000. So how does that work? So those two products are class B or class B plus IS transponder, meaning that both units transmit your positions as well as receive other boats running your area. And then they create a local Wi-Fi network and all the IS and GPS data will be transmitted over the Wi-Fi. And with a product like the AIT 5000, it can also be directly connected to your other NMEA equipment and other NMEA data will be transmitted over Wi-Fi. So for example, if you connect your depth, speed, et cetera, to the AIT 5000, you can simply connect, you will receive over the Wi-Fi network all the IS, GPS, but also speed, depth, et cetera. So everything through the same Wi-Fi network. However, if you already have an IS transponder on board, like Garmin, Raymarine, Vesper, Amtrak, whatever, you can simply connect your IS transponder to one of our enemy to Wi-Fi server, like, like I explained before, which is a WN30 or the Navlink 2. And then on TZI bot, you will directly receive in real time all your IS targets as well as the GPS position. So another beauty of TZI bot is one of the only Apple navigation app where you can also overlay radar data. So Antoine from Time Zero will come back to this point later on, but you can also merge the radar Wi-Fi data to one of the digital uh, image. Did you try that on me? You didn't. Excuse me for the noise of of poor. Um, you can directly merge the right the radar from the Furino to the AAT five thousand or to the enemy to Wi-Fi server. And by doing such a merge, you will then receive on TZ iBot or Time Zero navigation software, you will then receive an overlay of the radar as well as all the IS target and your other anime data like depth, speed, wind, etc. So by doing this is a very good, affordable and integrated system to get radar, IS and all your anime data directly onto an, on an iPad. And so the only way to get the radar into the TZ iBot is with the Furino DRS for W radar. It's directly, it creates its own Wi-Fi network on board, and through the easy web built-in web interface of our IS or animate Wi-Fi server, those products will then be merged to the Wi-Fi network created by the radar from, from the radar for Reno. It's actually a very good thing. It's the only is a perfect way to have all the data, radar, IS, etc., into an into your iPad. And so last things, we also get a lot of questions about how to use Time Zero Cloud. So Antoine will also explain later on what is Time Zero Cloud, but basically it's to get from the data on your Time Zero Navigator software or Time Zero Professional on your, on your PC. All the data can also automatically be sent to your iPad on TZI board. And to do this, you must have a Wi-Fi network on board and get internet connectivity. So the product, the perfect product for this is called 4G Extreme. So the 4G or 5G Extreme, because now 5G is available, is a 5G router. And so you add a SIM card, T-Mobile, AT&T, European SIM card, whatever. And then it will create a local Wi-Fi network on board. And you will then get actually a fast internet access on board up to 25, 30 miles. But what is good with that is you can connect your iPad, but also your PC and all the data from TZ iBot and Time Zero Navigator or Time Zero Professional will be shared together through the TZ Cloud solutions. 
And also with a 4G and 5G extreme products, it has a built-in NMEA 2000 cables, meaning that the NavLink 2, the product I've explained to you before, all the NMEA 2000 data will also be directly stream shared with the same Wi-Fi network. So with a 4G or 5G extreme over the same Wi-Fi network, you, you will get all your NMEA 2000 data as well as an internet connectivity through 4G and 5G up to 25 miles offshore. And also if you got a Furuno radar, you can also merge this to the Furuno radar. And finally, we had a lot of questions about Starlink. Starlink is a great product, but the rotor doesn't do NMEA, et cetera. You can simply connect the Starlink antenna directly to the 4G Extreme. So the perfect solution by having the 4G Extreme, you got everything onto the same Wi-Fi network, internet, um, NMEA 2000 data, et cetera. So that's it for the digital product. products. So now we're gonna go to the next part, which is about directly about the TZ iBot app. So now I'm going to give the access to Antoine and he will present the app. And if you have any question about digital products, feel free to write a message to us through the chat, bot, chat box or wait at the end of the webinar and I will, I will reply to all your questions. Okay, thank you very much, Nicolas. So yes, uh, we will see and I will introduce you uh, TZI Boat. Uh, I'm Antoine from the tech support of Time Zero. Uh, we do have a, a product which is called TZI Boat and which is compatible with iPhone and iPad. And we can uh, merge and uh, connect and set up all the digital yacht devices on the iPad so that you can retrieve all your NMEA data from all your sensors. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen and share the display of t that I got. You can see if you cannot see anything, do you? No. We we can't see Antoine. Okay. Work. Okay, so now you should all see TZ, TZ iBot, right? Yes. Okay, so uh, here, here it is. So TZ iBot is launched on my iPad. So I'm using an iPad. You can also use an iPhone, uh, of course, in order to, to use this um, tiny application. So if you don't have uh, TZ iBot uh, so far, you can download it for free on the App Store and create an account and just play with it, okay? After that, if you want to purchase uh, new charts, you can do it directly from our store, but we will see that just afterwards. Concerning the, the, the setup of all the devices, so you can retrieve all your information from the application just by clicking and pressing the TZ menu that you, that you have on the tab, top uh, left-hand corner which is here. And in this menu, we have a settings menu here. And in the settings at the bottom, we have initial setup. This is where you will be able to set up all your devices with TZI iPods. Uh, then you, since, uh, since you will get all the information from an NMEA gateway, you will have to select NMEA gateway configuration. And you have two types of protocol. You can connect through UDP. Uh, this is actually what we recommend because it's very easy. You just need to enter the port number of the device of the digital your device, just to let you know. And I think Nicolas will, um, will uh, 
confirm this, but the num the port number of all digital yachts devices are two thousand, right? That's correct. It's all okay. of digital yachts, IS transponder with Wi-Fi or animated Wi-Fi server, their IP address, the port number is always two thousand, no matter what. So once you have put two thousand here, you should see on the white box underneath all the NMEA data flowing in. Uh, once it's done, you can just select on uh, select OK in order to finish the configurations. It's as easy as that. Okay, if you need to um, connect and set up a TCP IP, then you can just switch to TCP IP, enter the IP address, enter the port number, and with the same, this is actually the same process in order to set up the devices. Okay, so once it's done. Uh, you just need to click on OK. And after a few seconds, you should see appearing the boat position around there. Yes. So I'm actually on the west coast of France here to do the demonstration, but we now have uh, a position, a real time position on screen. What we can have also, and we need to display them from the layers menu that you have on the bottom right hand corner, you, you see the, the three leaves like this. You, so you just need to select this tiny menu here. And from this menu, when you go down, you can just select the ARS targets if you're connected to an ARS transponder. Okay. So right now I have a GPS connected, I have an ARS connected. If I have a sensor, a wind sensor, for example, I could get wind information. Uh, I'm pretty sure that I have a sounder also connected. So in order to get all this information, you have to drag it from the left with your finger in order to see this menu, okay? And here we can see that I have my COG, so my kind of heading. We have our speed, the SOG. If we want to um, add some more information, we can just select add. And for example, if I have depth from a sounder, I can select depth. And here I have the depth coming in from my devices. The same way we can select both position, for example. And here we have the both position and the pitch for it up like this. Okay, so it's very easy. Uh, then we, uh, and Nicolas told us about this before, we have the possibility to set up also a radar picture. So we only have one radar compatible with TV Divode, which is the Furuno DRS4W. It's a Wi-Fi radar, and it is the only one for which we are compatible. How do we uh, select and how do we... Um, display the radar picture on screen. So I have to switch from a demo mode in order to show you, but from the TZ menu here, and again, in the settings, we have the initial setup and we can switch from a demo mode. So I will switch from demo mode and here my boat position will change and I will have my radar picture just like this. Uh, also, thanks to the digital yield devices, we can merge and the radar picture and the ARS targets, okay? So there is a tiny configuration in order to get both um, data uh, on, on screen. Uh, you will have to enter the port number and uh, the IP number of the DRS4W into the digital yield um, device in order to get NVIS targets and the radar picture on screen of TZ Diode. I will go back to my position in France. So I will quit the demo mode, just like that. And I will go back to my position. So here, here I am so on the west coast of France. As you can see, I do not have much data concerning the chart information, and this is what I'm going to introduce you now. Um, for those who already know TZI Bot, we released a former version on which uh, the user had to choose a chart, a nautical chart. So the user had to choose between or a vector chart, 
from CMAP or a raster chart. It's a scanned uh, chart information uh, from the show. Uh, we have released uh, since the latest version of this vote, we have just released our own chart data, our own chart format, which is called TZ Maps. Okay, so this is brand new. We are very proud, proud to introduce you to this new chart format. And we will see, you will see that we have a lot of features uh, concerning these new charts. And the good thing about the charts first is that before the user had to choose between one format or the other, or vector or raster, if you choose to get TZ maps, you will have both instantly and vector charts and raster charts. And you will also have another functionality which is called Batty Vision, but we will see this at the end of the, of the, of the training. So uh, how do we uh, select and how do we display the charts on TZ Divot? Again, on the bottom right hand corner, you have these three leaves like this. So you have to select this menu and there on the top of the menu, you will see. So basically by default, if you have no charts with the, with the application, you will have the basic map length, okay? It's so open source. Uh, but you will not have much detail concerning uh, nautical charts. So once you have purchased a vector chart uh, or a raster chart through TZ maps, so once you have purchased TZ maps, you will be able to switch from one display to the other. So I just here select vector charts. So here we have the vector charts, but I can also switch to the raster chart like this. And for you guys who are living in the UK, for example, we do have information, vector information and raster information uh, in the UK, and we also have, have them uh, in the US. Okay, so you can switch from one model to the other. Also, obviously, you will be able to uh, select the chart overlay. So here underneath, you have the possibility to display satellite pictures just like this, it's HD, so it's very precise. So how do you purchase a map with CZ Divot? Very easy, you just need to select the TZ icon on the top left and select store. There you will be able to select TZ maps. Uh, we also have weather premium because with TZ, with TZ iBot, we do have uh, a forecast file service weather forecast, uh, which is free. So you can use it for free. If you need more precise and more accurate models all around the world, you can subscribe to the weather premium service, which costs around 10 euros. Uh, so let's select TZ maps and there you will be able to select the area on which you are navigating, okay? So I will select Europe, and here, for example, we have uh, coverage for the Atlantic coast, uh, for also the North Sea, uh, and so for, also for the Mediterranean uh, Sea, as you can see. Okay, so you just need to select the chart that you want to purchase. It's an it's a annual subscription, okay? So you will have the possibility to subscribe for one year and during the whole year, you will have for free all of the updates of the chart that you have selected and purchased. Okay. I'm gonna just hide the satellite pictures here. So, this is a new format, but this is not only like a nautical chart, just like you purchase a nautical chart. We also have a different features concerning this new format, and this is what I'm going to introduce you now. Okay, so first you will have uh, the you will have the possibility to switch from um, one theme to another. Uh, if you select the TZ menu you have settings concerning the vector chart. Okay, so I can select vector chart here. And here I can change the color theme. 
So I know that some of our users, they prefer to have other kind of charts. One, one thing that is very important is that all the features that I'm going to present now are on are available on the vector chart. And it's actually normal because a raster chart is uh, a scanned source of map. So you cannot interact with the chart. So we have to switch to the, the vector chart. So I'm going back to my settings, select vector chart, and here I can change, well, the theme of my chart. For example, I can switch to an S52 presentation, for example. I can also switch to a sunlight presentation, just like this. Okay, so you will have different, you have eight different themes. Okay, you also have the show presentation, you have the NOAA also, Explorer, okay, so any of you will have to decide which kind of uh, chart overlay concerning vector charts they want to display on screen. I will go back, switch back to the standard mode. What do we have? We also have the style of the icon. As you can see, the icon for the boys, for example, are presented um, a certain way. We can switch from a paper chart style to a simplified chart, okay? So we can switch from one to the other. Also concerning land, we have land features. As you can see here, I'm going to zoom in. We are in La Rochelle in France. So we have information concerning uh, land here. We can switch off the land feature in order to have Absolutely nothing, but if you want to have more information concerning land, you can switch to the open street map that you have by default with TZI Box if you have no chart, and also the official S52 presentation. Okay. You have less information, you still have data, but less <coughs> than the open street map. We can also play with the, the object size. And we can just have an object size which is bigger, or uh, we can also diminish the object size. Okay. And to finish with, we can also decide for the vector chart uh, the the actually the, the the depth concerning the shallow waters and the deep waters, for example. Uh, here I have uh, deep waters at 32 feet, but I can switch to for example, 55, as you can see here. And if I will be able to do the same for the safety waters. You see? So it's very easy to configure this way. So this is for the presentation of the map. Then we have developed a few features that are very, very nice. And I'm going to uh, start with the commu community maps. So we are 91% uh, connected to this presentation right now uh, for this webinar. So we are uh, maybe 91% who are part of the Time Zero community. Okay, so we have decided to create a layer that you will be able to show or hide on your chart. And this layer, the, the goal of this layer is that any of you, me, uh, Nicolas, or maybe you, with the possibility to add information on the chart, okay? And create some information, some data on the chart. How does it work? As you can see, maybe, I think I have some example here. So the community layer will be displayed by default. If you want to hide it, you will have to go on the uh, layers menu here and unselect the community maps here. So for example, here we have uh, a boy here. Now it's a lighthouse. And as you can see, you have on this icon like a picture displayed. Actually this picture is from the community map because if I hide if I hide the commun community maps, we can see that it disappears. So it means that a user, a CZI bot user, took a picture and decided to put it on the lighthouse. So this is why now we have a picture. 
So any of you can add more information. If on certain areas, uh, we know that nautical charts are not as accurate as we, we, we wish it, it would be. So any user can, for example, create a buoy that is present uh, on a certain area. How do we create a buoy on the chart? We can just select one uh, place on the chart. So we select with the finger. And here from the menu, you have the possibility to create a chart object. Now you can create any kind of object. So we have obstructions for navigation. We have beacons. We have buoys. We can uh, also add some more information. So buoys, as you can see, you have like a lot of uh, presentation for buoys. Uh, we have also a leisure activity, for example, also. So on the place that I've selected, if I want to point like a nice diving spot, I can just click on diving spot. And there you can just put a name. So you put the name of the spot. You can also select or take a picture. So you can select a picture from your gallery like this. And there you can put a comment as easy as that. And you can rate it. Then you can create the spot. And this icon that we can see with the tuba and mask will be on the community maps and will be visible uh, for all the time zero users. Okay, you, me, anyone. Uh, the good thing also is that, for example, if someone put a buoy at this location and you're navigating, you're sailing on the same area and you see that the buoy indeed is on this, uh, on this location, you will have like a pop-up asking you if the buoy that is that has been uh, put by another user is relevant or not. If it's relevant, you will be able to click on yes. If it's not, you click on no. And we have uh, on our chat department in Maxi Time Zero, we have a team that will be able, like moderators, that will be able to um, well, to confirm and to decide if we keep the data or not. For example, if uh, if someone put a picture of a dog uh, for a lighthouse, it doesn't make sense. Uh, and we will be able to remove this information from the community layer. OK, so this is like a great feature that is good for all our uh, users. And we'll be able to share a lot of things. Then another feature that we have is concerning lights. We have called it dynamic lights. So as you can see on my map here, I have um, different lighthouse icons here, for example, this one. And as you can see, this one also someone put a picture on it. Okay, This is from the community layer. So you just select a lighthouse. You have the picture. You scroll down to the menu. And here you can show the light range, show light range. I'm going to select show light range. And here you have the different sectors of the lighthouse and where the light reach on the sea. So we have two different sectors, one yellow, one red, uh, one green, sorry. And according to the position that you will have uh, with the digital device, through your GPS, you will also be able to um, display this um, lighthouse with the color corresponding with the color of the, of the sector on which you are. So basically here, the boat is in the yellow sector. So we can switch from this view to another view. So if we want to switch to another view, we have to go to the settings again. And from the vector chart settings, you have we have a, a light menu. You have display mode, so you have simple sectors, but you can switch to dynamic. And if I switch to dynamic, I will have represented on screen all the lights uh, and the color of the lights according to my boat position. Okay. So as we could see, we were with this light on the yellow sector. 
And this is why the light here is displayed in yellow. We can display another one, maybe. Here we have that. That way it's also in voice, so it's, it's not relevant for this example. But as, we, for example, this one also, we can show the light range. So we have different light range. And if my board were, uh, were in the, the, at the bottom of my screen, certainly the light uh, light would be uh, red because I would be in the red sector of the, of the light. And also we have the possibility to switch from this view to another view, which is dynamic, so with the colors, but also, Better charts. You can have dynamic and flashing. And it will flash according to the lighthouse configuration. Okay, so this is one uh, of the new features that we have with TZ Maps uh, on TZ labels. Another one we have, and I'm going to Go back, sorry, to the normal display with the chart. Simple sectors. I will also have the possibility uh, to display some areas. We have a new feature that we have called Smart Zones. And uh, with this feature, you will be able to see and get uh, notified when you enter a specific area and when you get out of this specific area. For example, in order to display the smart zone, we have a nav data. The nav data, it's actually the left column as, that you can see with all the real time information that you get from your sensors. So we can just add chart zone. And here in chart zone, you will have all of the areas where your boat is and on which area is going to enter. So here, for example, we have a C named water area, Rad de la Palisse. You can select it with your finger. And TZI boat will automatically show you which area is corresponding and where you are situated according and compared to this area. We also have, like for example, administration area, maritime and river regulation area of Grand Port Maritime de la Rochelle. So we can just select it, and we also have this area selected and displayed on screen. This area also we have possibility to select and display this area. This is very important because if you are entering a prohibited, uh, prohibited area. Uh, or a dangerous area, you will be notified because not only you will have this information from the left column, but every time you enter a new area, you will have a notification on the top of the screen saying that you are entering or um, on the way out of a certain area. So this is also one, one of uh, our new features. Uh, I've seen something because I'm going to just uh, remove this information from the nav data uh, concerning the lights. Also, we can add the fishing lights. Okay, so you have the possibility also to select any light from this menu. Okay. Also, we have integrated a new search uh, engine in TZ uh, and it, you will be able to search any kind of information on the chart. The search engine uh, can be accessible from the TZ menu also and from the smart search icon. And here you can put any kind of information. So it's like a, a Google, um, search engine, it works the same, and it's as powerful as Google engine. So you just need to, uh, okay, um, let's say ONS. Okay, 
So here we already have a few results. Oh, sorry, I need to go back here. And we already have a few results here. And it's indicated with the red pins that you can see on screen. Okay, and then you can, if you're searching for uh, Anse de la Fertalière, which is the first one, you can just select it here, and this about will automatically zoom in the location. It works with any kind of information on the vector chart, but also it works with your database. For example, if you have put uh, marks and roots with a specific name, you can just search for the name of a mark and you will have uh, the name of this mark among the results. We have two last features to see. Uh, one of these are the dynamic, dynamic moorings. So we have this new feature in order to select and display the moorings, you have to select the layers menu on the top right, on the bottom right, sorry. And there you can just scroll down and select dynamic moorings. So if I zoom in, I should see already a few moorings here. These are those icons that you can see in green and orange in the screen. As you can see, we have a few more rings that have been pointed by TZ Time Zero users. We can see that because we have a little star here, for example, on this mooring. So this mooring has been added by a Time Zero user. We can just select it in order to have more information concerning the chat objects. And here you can update the name. Okay, you have the name. The, the 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 user who has put this information is called Teddy R, and you will have some information. So this guy is French, so you will have uh, his French comment in the chat object information. But obviously, if you are navigating and sailing around the UK, you will have all this information uh, in uh, in English. So how does it work? Uh, we have, for example, here one ring which is in a color green, uh, in color uh, orange. So on the bottom left, you can see that you have the mooring forecast setup. So you can just select the date where you think you will uh, you will go. You know, so you I would select, for example, um, let's say the tenth of November, and from eight. To one. So here I will have the mooring information concerning uh, this location. If I go to another location, let's see, to search for an interesting one. Okay, this one is good. So this one is green. Why? Because it's protected from the wind. How do I know that? Because you can see like a very tiny, um, how do we say that? Like a an arc, like a circle, you know, as you can see on the top of the, of the icon. And what you can see here, uh, it's like nearly surrounded. And uh, it's, it, it, it means that it's, it's on this area, it's protected by the wind, okay? And the little green arrow is the, the information that will show you where the wind comes from, okay? And if it's green, it means that you can just stay there for uh, during the, the the time that you have set up, you know, on, on, on the die boat, and, and you will be okay with this, okay? Uh, if we can, I'm pretty sure that we have other ones here. This one is okay, it's good, so it's completely protected, as we can see, because we are inside the arbor. And this one is not protected at all. And you can see that we, we will have wind uh, from the left. Uh, so uh, in order to make it work also properly, you will need to um, have uh, a weather forecast loaded in time to arrivals, but it's very easy and it's free. Okay. Also on this one, we will have some more chart object information.
You can also create your own mooring. So you just need to select one uh, place on the nautical chart. And from the menu, you will also be able to create a mooring. And the same way, you will have to put your the, the name of the mooring, maybe put a picture and a, and a comment. So this is it for the dynamic moorings. And uh, last but not least, uh, we will have the Batty Vision presentation. So I'm going to zoom in again on my chart. So as I said before, when you purchase a TZ Maps uh, area, you will have vector charts and raster charts and Batty Vision charts. What is Batty Vision charts? Batty Vision chart is a chart where you will be able to uh, configure and set up more console lines on your area and display more uh, shading, we will say. So how do we display that? We go on the layers menu again, and we switch from the TZ vector to TZ Batty Vision. I'm going to select this guy. And here I have a different presentation of my chart. So we are on the same area. We have three things to see concerning the battery vision. As we can see, we have like a blue shading that goes from blue to white. It concerns information uh, between zero and 20 meters. How do we know that? Because on the bottom left, you have the battery vision setup. So I selected zero to 20, uh, it's 15 meters, I think. And we can switch to another um, value. Okay, so here I have from zero to 50 feet. If I want more uh, shading from zero to 200, we can see, okay. So I will get back to zero to 20 feet. And also the good thing is that we will be able to add more contour lines. As we can see, we have a few contour lines in the area, but I can just select, as you can see, you have like some kind of a, it's, it's, it looks like a globe, uh, a blue globe icon on the bottom left and with the number one. So we have five different levels of contour, of contour lines. Uh, so if I'm going, if, if I click on this, I will go to, Step number two, so we have more control lines, three, four, and until five, in order to have more details on the chart. And according to the zoom level also, I will have more information concerning depth, 3D, and contour lines in my area. And what's great, what's even more great, is that you will be able to overlay the uh, bathymetric data, the depth shading, depth shading data. How do we do that? Again, from the layers menu, you will be able to select the depth shading here. And here we can just drag the chart wherever we want in order to have great information in the area. So the color is changing because obviously we are approaching different depths. So it's changing as soon as you move the chart on different different areas. And as you can see here, for example, we have like a, a very nice presentation of the Batty Vision uh, display. All these features that I have introduced, community maps, uh, the dynamic lights, the smart zones, uh, the smart search, also the moorings, the dynamic moorings, the batty vision are all included by default on the TZ Maps format. So do not hesitate, uh, give it a try. If you don't have TZ iPod so far, you can just download the application from the App Store for free. You just need to create an account, play with it, and as soon as you are ready, you can just purchase a new chart, a new TZ Max chart with all its features. It's been a bit long, I'm sorry, but uh, it was very important for me to introduce you all the features that 
we developed for so many years. And uh, again, we are very proud of what we've done. And we, we hope that our users are, will be also very happy with what we, that we have done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we're gonna go back to the, to the Q&A. If any of you have any questions, and also Antoine, you have accepted on this attempt. So Antoine, the first question we had, I tried to reply as many as I can. One was, how much of the chart information is available when you're offline? Uh, so it's a good question. When you're connected to the internet, you will have access to uh, the TZ map chart uh, that you have purchased. So again, if I go to the uh, TZ menu, to the store, sorry, not to the store, to offline charts and weather, all the users will be able to download the charts offline. What does that mean? It means that obviously if you're connected, if you're connected to the internet, you will have access to all your charts. What happens when you're not connected anymore to the internet, you will lose your charts. Okay. So this is why it's very important for you guys to go to the offline TZ maps here and select the cells of the charts, the chart cells that you need for your area. If you are uh, sailing around the Isle of Man, you just select the area and TZ iBot will download the chart so that it can be available when you're not connected to the internet anymore. And so that you can have access to this area when you're sitting. Okay. So it's in, in a few seconds, the area will be downloaded. So it's still uh, like downloading, but it's going to be over in a, in a few seconds. Okay. So don't forget uh, to download all the chart sets that you need for your navigation. You're not obliged uh, to, to download everything, uh, of course but you can just select the cells that you really, really need for your navigation. Other questions, maybe? Yes, we I got the chat two, here. The chat here. Next one, is TZ subscriptions user-based or device-based? Um, what is the question again? From John, is TZ I bought subscriptions, user base or device base. If two or more M's, can one device drive all displays? Yeah, so when you buy, when you purchase the TZ Maps uh, area, it will be available for uh, up to five different devices. So since we are compatible with iPad and iPhone, if you have two iPhones and one iPad, you just need to purchase one TZ Map area and it will be available for the three devices. I hope I answered the question. Well, you received a technical question, which I think is not, uh, we can reply to this later. Mm -hmm. Also, a very good question from Scott. Is it possible for you to have the waypoints information on TZI bot match what is on your Furino machine? So like all the data on your waypoint on your Furino is um, going straight to the TZI, TZI bot with like name, comments, every data about the, the waypoint. Yes, uh, with, a, with, a, with a Furuno, it, we, are, we are talking about the Furuno TZI Tough, right? Yes. Okay, so yes, the, the Furuno TZI Touch has its own hotspot. So once you create a road, uh, once you create a mark, uh, once you create an area with TZI bot, it will be automatically synchronized with um with uh, your navnet and tz i bought and also because we also have um another software uh, which is called time zero navigator uh which is available on pc it's a pc software uh you, you will also be able if you're connected to the same local network to uh, synchronize all this data and, and have all of this data in real time on your three devices but the the, the, the navnet tzt is Yes, he's creating his own upspot.
I'm a bit lost with all the questions. I don't know where to start. Yeah, we'll we see the uh, Okay. So, uh, is this iPod available on Android? No. Is it? Uh, we are working on it. Uh, for now, it's not compatible. I guess we will have to develop a version for Android. Uh, but for now, it's not the case. Um, I have a lot of Android suggestions and feature requests, so this is good. Uh, Android and Mac are not compatible with our apps or software, but we do a lot of feature requests for our users. Um, uh, this one you have answered. You have answered a lot of things. For those who have any questions, feel free to unmute your mic and you can directly ask us the questions, whether it's about digital products or TZI bot or even time zero. Uh, Antoine, a question about auto routing. Uh, yes, so auto routing is not available at the moment. Uh, we, have, I would say that uh, I have more hope to see the auto writing uh, on a future, uh, on a very uh, quick uh, future update than the Android uh, compatibility. So we are working on on a proper auto -write routing. We hope that it would. Uh, have been available with this update. Unfortunately, it's not because we still have uh, to perform to perform and, and get a proper uh, product and a proper functionality to offer to our users. So this is why we are a bit late. But we do have uh, we 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 already have an auto rating ready. So it's gonna be it's gonna be available soon. For your weather maps, do you have any ability to put in different weather models for the uh, full-on uh, Furno TZ or the IBO, either one? Uh, I'm not sure for the Furuno TZT, uh, but I, I, to be very honest, I don't remember if the TZT offers a possibility to download weather forecasts. Okay. But but um, if you, for example, download a weather forecast with TZI bot, it will not be synchronized with your uh, TZ touch, Navnet TZ touch on Furuno, okay? For sure. Uh, now concerning uh, a, a quick overview concerning the weather that we have, the weather forecast service that we have. So it's completely free. We have one model with, which is the GFS model, okay? It's a model from the NOAA, uh, providers. If you need more accurate models, weather forecast models, you can subscribe to the uh, Time Zero Weather Premium service and you will have more um, accurate data through different models like the uh, Meteo France models like Arpege and Arom. Uh, Ar the Arpege model is a European model, so you will have the possibility to, to download the nearly whole Europe. Uh, we also have uh, the Arom, uh, Arom model, which I think um, covers the uh, south of England, all the coasts of France, uh, and uh, part of the Mediterranean. Uh, and also we have different models, ICON, ICON models. Uh, we have the European model of ICON and the global one also, which is much more accurate than the GFS one that we have for free. And we also have a, a NAMCONUS model for the US. Thanks. Uh, uh, Evan, for your email, we're going to drop you an email to all of you afterwards, and we're going to publish the webinar on YouTube. So then you can rewatch the webinar, the recording directly on YouTube. You're welcome.
we already have time zero maps for our Furuno and Navionics charts for iPad. Can we use them or do we have to buy, buy them again? Unfortunately, yes, it will have to be purchased again. Any other questions? Um, is that it all for today? Uh, um, I have one. Um, on my TZ iBoat, uh, on my iPad, I have a horizontal time scale on the bottom. I'm not quite sure how it uh, popped up here, but I'm trying to eliminate that from the display. Uh -huh. And I'm wondering uh, how to do that. I think you just need to switch off the weather from the layers menu. As soon as switch I select, so for example, you have to, you see, you have from the layers on the bottom right menu, you have yep. the weather. So you have to uh, switch off the wind information because as soon as I, uh, I select wind, I have the time bar at the bottom of the screen. Okay, I did that and it did not uh, disappear. It does not disappear. Do you have any other information or any other data that are selected in the weather? Uh, no, menu? I don't. No. So maybe it concerns, it concerns the tidal height stations and the tidal currents. Um, those are off as well. Those are off as well. Let's see. Oh, actually, tidal height stations uh, eliminated. I apologize. Yeah, yes. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> hey, this I is Evan. I have a question. Yes. I was wondering why, when you sign out, you can lose all your data that was saved. You should not. What what are we talking about when we talk about data? If I, if I sign out of my TZ iBoat account, mm -hmm. okay, it it'll give me a message saying that you will you will lose all your. Uh, it said if you tap yes, the app will exit, and you will need to sign in before you can use the app again. Internet connection required. Okay. Also, your user objects and chart data, downloaded codes will be erased from this device so concerning the tracks it's possible because tracks are not saved in the tz cloud but your marks your routes your areas should be saved because it's 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 been loaded uh, onto your cloud so when you sign out and you sign sign in back again you should retrieve all this information okay okay yeah because i have i have a an account, my personal account, and I also have an account for the boat. Okay, so yeah. uh, you have an account for the boat. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know what to say, to be honest. Okay. All right. No, that's uh, no problem. And and I got to say, these the Beth Metric charts that you guys came out with are mm -hmm. incredible. Um, oh, I'm on, on Long Island, um, Long Island, New York, and it's just, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Great job with that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I have a question. Yes. I asked it earlier, but I don't know if you, you guys saw it. I have a, a Furuno TZTBB uh, uh, MFD driver, if you will, or computer, which, which generates its own Wi-Fi that I connect TZ iBo to. Mm -hmm. And I wondered whether if any of the functionality that I get is different because I connect that way versus connecting through the gateway that you alluded to earlier. Um, when you say functionality, what kind of functionality? All of the functionality. In other words, I I have I know I have at least some of the functionality because I I trans um, transmit routes back and forth. But is is there any additional functionality that is afforded by the connection through the device that you described, which is the NMEA gateway hardware device that generates a Wi-Fi um, uh, network that I can access versus the um, built-in TZTBB 
Wi-Fi network? In other words, are there are there any functional differences between those two type of connection approaches, or, or is all of the functionality equal between those two? To me, it should be exactly the same because you are connecting to a local network. So, uh, the TZ TBB will, as you said, create his own hubspot, his own Wi-Fi right. uh, hubspot. So you will be able to synchronize all your data, meaning marks and routes and stuff like that. And also, you will be able to send through this local network all the NMEA uh, data from your sensors. And if you are using, uh, I mean, if any other user is using like the digital yield, and you will be able to create your own uh, local network and you will have exactly the same kind of functionalities. To me, to me, it should be exactly the same. Thank you very much. And you guys did an amazing job. This application is the best I've ever seen. Tremendous. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right, well, I think that will be it for today. Any other questions? Oh, that's fine. I see other questions. The maps from the Navigator cannot be used on the Navigator. However, if you have the Navigator maps, then you can use with the Navigator with their new chart system. Yes, this is exactly true. What is said? What is said? So uh, Nicolas said this uh, on the chat. Uh, if you vote um, TZ maps on TZ Dibot and you have TZ Navigator, you you won't be able to use uh, the the charts on TZ Navigator. But if you have purchased, because in order to have TZ maps on TZ Navigator, you need to uh, access and and update your software to the latest version five. Uh, so what we did, uh, if you were on version four and you want to update to version five, you just need to buy to purchase a TZ Maps area, and you will get the TZ Navigator version five for free. And additionally, since you have purchased this TZ Map on TZ Navigator, it will also be unlocked for TZ labels. But on the other way, it's not possible. Right, perfect. But thanks, thanks, Anton, for everything. Thank you all today for having listened listen to us. We're going to send you an email by the end of this week with a YouTube link to rewatch the webinar or to share it with whoever wants to watch the webinar. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, drop us directly on email for Digital Yacht website or Time Zero websites. And hopefully see you all soon in another webinar or directly in any boat shows in the US, UK, or Europe, or, or even Australia. So have a good have a good day, have a good evening for those who are in Europe, and uh, speak soon. Thank you very much, guys. See you then. Thanks, bye. -bye. <laughs>